Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to attempt the final flower in my little kit, little stump work project that I've been working on. So I was just looking at these threads because we need to create a little bundle of threads like that. So, and there's two colors. So it doesn't tell you how many threads to use. It doesn't tell you really a great deal, but we've got pictures. So I'm thinking I can just sort of wing it. I can trim them down, you know, shape the little flower once we get it going, but we've got to create a little tussle of them. So I'll just wind two strands. The strands are really long. I've been cutting them in half to, actual, to actually embroider with them. There we go, with some little scissors. So I believe this is the procedure we need to tie it off in the middle. Be nice if they told me the exact, the exact width and lengths and heights and things. I think that's too big. Start again, guys. I'm not convinced that that's right. Let's have a look at the little area that we're supposed to be within. I think it'd be no more than that, to be honest. So let's, let's make it smaller. And I want it really fluffy. I bet you I'm meant to use one, but we'll do two. So welcome, welcome to my channel, you new folk out there. This is part of a collaboration or, no, it's not a collaboration really because the leader of the gang is Susanna from Vintage Blend Studios. And she came up with the idea of doing a series on vintage sewing techniques. And I thought, oh yes, there's some in there that I've never tried. We finished that nine months into the year and we had, I had space in my journal, space, spare pages, and Susanna could easily add to her journal, just add additional pages, because she did a concertina style journal. So we put it out there to you guys to give us three more prompts. And one was wool embroidery, cathedral windows, and stump work. So here we are doing stump work. Now I think from my memory, I've still got two pages left. So if you guys would love to throw in another suggestion, I do not ask me to do tatting. That'd probably all make lace. Don't make any suggestions where the work is really fine because you're just gonna, you're just gonna break me. <laughs> But if you've got something out there, at the moment I've got nothing on the top of my head I can think of, but I could certainly revisit a few things in the journal because I've really enjoyed it. Now, I'm, not, I'm still not convinced that's right. I suppose if I get it deep, it still feels like it's going to be too big. Let's just move the tie down because I would say looking at that picture, the thistle is no more than probably half an inch. So what I might do, and you know what I forgot to do in amongst all this, is add the second colour because I was chatting to you guys. I think I'll cut that. I think the tie needs to be probably there instead of in the middle. I know the picture shows it in the middle, but we're 
breaking the rules. Now we need a little bit of dark embroidery thread. I'm going to have to start another Oats jar. I've got an Oats jar with the Nikki Franklin uh, stitcheries because there was so many goodies left from that. And now I've got all these pieces left from this kit, but they're a slightly darker tone. So I'm going to need to start another jar. How exciting. No jar at all in my world because I tend to cut and use all the threads. And now, when I was watching Jennifer's video, and she's all about these Oats jars, I'm thinking, oh, I've never had an Oats jar. I'll have to start one. So I attempted, and the jar sat empty pretty much. So, <laughs> I, was, I gave up on it actually. I, I took the three threads that were in it and used them and then put the jar away. And then I decided, right, time to get these Nikki Franklin kits underway and make my little journal and start that little series of embroidery, embroidery projects. And <laughs> Nikki's so generous with her kits. Every little embroidery gave me oughts leftover little bits of thread. So I've got this gorgeous little warts jar happening. So there you go. Now, I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm going to use that now to tie. And I'm gonna come down a little bit. I just, oops. I just feel like it doesn't need to be too big. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now the green they want us to use is number five. That's this little guy. a mess here but it's all good we're very close to the end of the project so then I can tidy up all my messy little threads okay now six strands I presume because the whole thing is being six strands yes that's correct I'm going to use a fairly big needle with a bit of a blunt end I think as in the end up here because I'm going to use that to turn and weave the blanket. Come on. Oh, come on. Why can a thread a needle be so hard sometimes? Nope. Not a very big hole. It's a great needle, but the stranded threads do not like it. So what's it suggesting? We have to couch it down first. Let's trim this a little bit. something happening that guy's probably a bit long he's sticking out I wonder if I can find that loop there we go and even those are a little bit that's better don't want it too big because it'll overpower the whole piece I've got plenty of threads left so if I decide that it's still too bulky as in oh those scissors I love these scissors but they're getting blunt I need a scissor sharpen person okay 
Now, it says to count your hands. See, look, how misleading is that? They show you tying it in the middle, and then I was like, here we go. They show you tying it in the middle, and then as we were making that, I felt like it needed to be lower. And look, it is. So why give us that picture when that's what they actually want? Goodness me. Anyway, just having a grizzle. <laughs> Don't you find that with kits sometimes? They're just a, a little bit vague. How are we going to do this? I know, I need a hoop. Hang on. Hold your horses, girl. Like, I love slow stitch <clears throat> because it's free form and stitches go wherever and you don't use a hoop, but the old hoop has to come out for these types of projects. They just need that stability when you're doing embroidery I think that's going to be too bulbous guys I used two threads and wound it then put the pink on top I think it's too much. I'm going to stop, stop, stop. I might, uh, how long have I wasted? Oh, it's only 10 minutes. What the hang? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to, I don't want the thistle to be pushing those up because it's too, I'm going to, too big and bulky. So I'm going to get rid of one of those pink threads Maybe it said in there. No, it didn't. It doesn't say anything. Let's start again. You could probably put two pins, you know, in your... Let's try that. Let's make, what do they call it? A jig? When you're a carpenter and you create a, a jig to wind things around. We could do that here, honey. Let it be clever. A bit bigger. I'd rather trim the thistle down. Oh, now we're talking. It doesn't hurt to do things a few times, does it? Because you come up with other ideas. This will be more uniformed at the end that I'm actually embroidering. This might be a stroke of genius. I'm sure all of you out there that have done this before are going, come in, make a jig. Now, can we be clever? And wind this guy on top. I think so. Why not? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yep. I just finished a coffee and I'm having that. And I drank the whole thing. I usually sip at it for about an hour. The cooler the coffee gets, the more enjoyable for me it is. But I drank it quickly because I wanted to get in here and get cracking on this. And now I'm having a hot, a hot rush of heat from the caffeine. Now I want to get that under there, but not lose the jig tautness. See, look at this. Third time is a dream. The girl is starting to think a little bit more about it. It's because I went to bed last night, just washed it and took off to bed. And this morning I'm like, oh, the thistle, the thistle. And I shot in here, sat down with very little thought. <laughs> and um, here we are. That's better. That's, yeah, that's good. 
I like that. I am going to, maybe they could come up. Yeah, they're long. These ones aren't, so I'm going to trim them. So they're out of my way with my dodgy little scissors. Okay. Now, where's it going? There. The dark is at the front. All right. So we've got our green thread. We've got our knot. Here we go. The adventure begins. So we're going to come up. there so remember the blue line is no longer because I've washed it away but I have so where how far do they catch it down right to the very end I might just get it secured Excuse, I'm all fingers and hands and toes here so I get my positioning. Get that first stitch in to secure it. Now I'm going to work back. Down. and it's going to be woven so I need to have a little space between everything I still think when I force the needle back down through all of these threads to catch you know to weave I still think I'm going to be pushing through all of those little all of those pink threads and causing a hell of a mess. I'm not convinced that this is going to be easy, you know. I think that'll be the final one on the bottom. <clears throat> Nothing like a new adventure, hey? I was saying to Susanna, she's, she did the piece where she embroidered from a photo her face onto a piece of floral fabric. And I said to her, she's so brave because she's done it with all of us watching. And I thought, oh, I don't think, <clears throat> I don't think I'd be that brave. And because embroidery like that is really slow because you just got to build it up, build it up, I think, I would have been absolutely panicking that it would work out. So you'll never see me do an embroidery of a face, a photo. Mind you, I don't really want to look at my mush for a period of time while I embroider it. <clears throat> that one has gone down past the end. But I'm actually not too worried about that, that bottom stitch, because I think that's going to bring my embroidery over the edge my weaving over the edge so that i get a round finish so i think i'm okay with that the theory in my head says that that should still work to have that one tucked under there we'll soon find out It's fiddly. Okay, and another one. I think that 
that should do it. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we've got to have odd numbers. So they then have you coming up in the middle to start the weaving process. Does that look right? Let's check, girl, before you soldier on. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. I've got seven. Okay. And it looks like to me, let me just bring it up. It looks like they've gone around each stitch. It's not a straight weave. They've wrapped around. Okay. So that means I've got to slither there. That'll make it nice and strong. Oh gosh, like I suspected. It is going to pierce the stitches or the threads. That's better. If I do it with the blunt end of the needle going in, the eye of the needle. Yeah, now we're cruising. Oh, look at that clever the pattern let's say we won't get too ahead of ourselves and say clever girl not yet move them out of the way and let's catch that little guy down the bottom that'll bring the green over the edge wow now what what do we do when we get to the bottom we come We go down and we pop up at the top and we go again. Okay. So we come back up beside that. And we go back down again. They look like they might have gone to the side, actually, and I've come up in the middle, but that's, I think, okay. What we might do is on the next row, we'll get that guy in. I th think that's probably what they want us to do. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> How gorgeous. I've seen this stitch in lots of different embroideries over the years and I've always wondered how they did that. It's got me looking for a good stump workbook. If you guys out there who do stump work Ow, that's a needle in my finger. If you guys out there know of a good book, that's a little bit loose, those stitches, that, you know, will give me a few more ideas and the tuition of it is really easy to understand. I think that that stitch is a little bit too gappy. But I think if I give that a little massage, I could come through there easily with another stitch. I'm probably not doing them close enough together. But that's all good. We're learning. Let's come up again in there. I just want to make sure that that's... Yeah, so pop into the comments a stump workbook that is... Like, I really want a lot of instructions. So if you know of one, or you have one in your collection that you think, oh, Corinne could use this, and it's still in publication, like I can get it, even if it's secondhand or something, that's usually the case when they're older, you know, let me know in the comments. I know there's plenty of YouTube videos out there, and I've seen a few different flower petals in my time. But, um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind a stump work. I'm sure Christine and even Sonia, Sonia Steptoe, I think you girls have probably got pretty good libraries of reference. So if you two can suggest a, an author, I probably need to go and revisit my thread store, my local embroidery specialist, which is All Threads, Norman Park in Brisbane. They've got a pretty good selection of books, all the modern books, and there might even be a more modern author out there that there is a book on their shelf that I could have a, a little look at and... So there we go. So now we're back down the bottom. Let me just squish them. Isn't that amazing? I actually got that third thread in the middle there. Just going to bring that back together. So what I might do now is come up over here and get the one that runs along the edge of the fabric. Then I think I will leave you guys in peace and quiet. And toddle off. I can stitch the rest of this this afternoon. Then I might pop back. What did I do? I didn't weave it. So I started thinking. I've just got to. Slow down, girl. So that's the thing. Once you get into a rhythm of the stitch, away you go. But until you get your your noodle or your mummery, mummery, mm, memory, muscle memory, which is a big thing in crocheting, once you get that pattern locked into your, your noodle, you find that you've got that muscle memory. And it does happen with embroidery to some degree. Didn't do the weave around that first. I hope you guys can see. How fun is this? Okay. That's pretty good. Now I'm getting getting the drift of this. And I just need to make sure it sits right down on the fabric because we don't want to see any of that pink peeking through. One more. How are we going for time? Oh, we got time. Well, not really because I do want to place fabrics down. As well maybe we continue on with that and I then will have fabrics to stitch I feel like that stitch has come up too high yeah it has I must have yeah look at that see that there I must have had an angle on my needle and it shot forward Just threading. My needle is just doesn't have a big enough eye. And I don't have a needle threader at hand, so I'm struggling a little bit. That's all good. So I've got to get my needle right at the top of that little grid. And away we go again. Wrap around. Wrap around. I wonder if this stitch is in Jennifer's books. I bet it is. I just haven't absorbed everything that's in those books because it's just, oh, so much, so much fun to be had. 
I'm trying to keep my direction of my needle the same too because otherwise your, your weave will look like it's, you know when you rub carpet and the nap goes one way and then the other? This has sort of got the same effect. If the needle was to come up this side versus coming up underneath to keep that nice satiny look. I think we're at the bottom. Yeah, we're going down. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to sit here and finish the weaving and then I'll come back, we'll trim, fluffy it up and then um, I can lay some fabrics down and sort of blend it in with a little bit of slow stitch using some of the scraps. So where are we at? We're about halfway through. Okay. Excellent. All right, guys, be back in a second. Hi, guys, I'm back and my little thistle is done. Oh, love it. Love it. I think the sizing is good too. It um, is finishing about where that lavender is, so that's good. Now, they seem to have the little thistly bit at the top sort of level with that lavender, so I might grab my really sharp scissors so that I don't chop this all rough and maybe I cut it first. Yeah. Yeah, I just had a feeling that if I had to wash this to get rid of the lines, the pre-printed lines, there's a high likelihood that my, you reckon there, that my, um, fibers on these little edges would look like they had been wet. You know that look they get? So now we need to break open all of those little threads. I won't spend too much time on this because I can do that off camera, but the, the object here is to make it look soft and fluffy. So we need to separate those six little strands into individuals so we get that soft, fluffy look. How good is that? So I'll leave it at that so we get the general gist. Now, the plan is to make this little piece look like it is part, oops, part of a, a page, a double, double page spread. So let's grab the journal. Let's put a few things out of my way here because we're finished with all the, the embroidery side of things. So let's go to our book. And this is the signature. See, I've got plenty of little scraps here. So I only want, and there's even a bit of lace. I only want, this is the spread. So the theory was to put the bird on one side, which is the Susanna stitched piece, which we've embellished. I just want to check my spine. That's good. So that one will go there, and then this one, if I've sketched it all out right, it's the same size, yep, more or less, will go there. So we need to blend just a little bit of this into this. At the moment, it just doesn't work together. So that's the plan. So let's get that out of the way. Actually, we'll keep the little birdie out because we need that as our colour palette. I need to give it a good iron, but at least let's get a few bits and bobs down. Oh, I like the little bird cage. I like that blue. Don't 
No, let's just fiddle. I need more. I need more fabrics and they're just sitting to one side. Got my container here. Let me just rummage with some of those darker, darker fabrics. Got a little bit of lace here as well. This little piece, that little piece would match. It's not in there, but it's the right tones. So it's really just doing some random little pieces just to frame it, I guess. I could could even frame the page, you know, where you do an edge around it, but I don't think that's what I need to do. I just think we just need a, a smattering of bits and bobs. See, there's a bit of floral on that. And that picks up the pink over here. Little bit of that because that's there down here. What else do we have? It's a bit of everything in this basket. There's the floral there. I think we could have a little morsel of that just up here. It's just little bits, you know, just blending little bits. And I'll do some stitching, a little bit of check. Okay. I can hear a fly in here. I've got the door ajar and Fudgy has gone out for a, his morning little sit and contemplate the world go by <clears throat> yeah I like that and the door is you know that far apart just enough for a fudge to go in and out but we now have a fly I sort of felt like this could be nearly in a bouquet too that was a thought when I was stitching it last week you know, have a, a lace piece somehow, like it looks like it's clustered. Don't mind that idea. We use stump work so we can raise things. How's that look on the camera? You guys can't even see the top, let me, there we go. Don't mind that, you know, guys. Just as a little something, something. Yeah, let's pin that. Gives the piece a bit of interest, doesn't it? My book is going to be so bulky, and I've still got two pages to go. Mm. Maybe that comes out of there. And it becomes a piece up there. Yeah, that's better. That overpowered it. And I do like that. Lock it in. That's a good start. And I'll just do running stitch through with just a standard crochet cotton. I'll gather that a little bit more when I stitch that down. Like put another little pleat there so that it gets a little bit frillier. Yeah, I like that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That little one there. At the moment, he's a lonesome piece, but I don't mind. 
No, Fudgy, please don't jump up again. You've already had your morning hello. No, Fudgy. Okay. Now, just need a swoosh of something down here. jumped out at me just for a little interesting element you know just a little printed image just tucked in there I think that's what I'm gonna do yeah he's not in there he is a lucky bird those two there they are Tim Holtz fabrics if you're wondering I find them just so helpful. That one there is as well. I think that's part of a sewing range that he did. Or uh, at school, like there's letters and alphabet and days of the week printed on this range of fabric. And this one, I think, is a completely different. There we go. I like it. That's it. Don't do any more, girl. Just leave well enough alone. Put all your bits back and I think that will merge really well with that. It's like this is intense and dense where this is just a little bit more airy, loose. So the thread I will probably stitch that with. Can I see the thread? Yes, I can. I'll probably just use um, DMC, a cream, a crew, number eight and just do some running stitch over it all yep love it i'll stitch that down there yeah yep very good okay guys that'll give me something to work on um this afternoon when i get back to the couch and I will pop back at the end of the video and just show you it all stitched and I don't know, maybe other things happened with the little snippets, but I don't think so. Don't think so. See, I did an overcast stitch around that. I'll probably do that to either that one or that one to make it sort of drift. Hmm. Yeah, very good. Okay, I will see you in a moment and it should be all done, cut out and ready to put into my journal. So back in a second. Hello everyone, I'm back. A moment has passed and the two pieces are complete and I've stitched them into my journal and here they are. There's this full spread and I love it. I love the fact that I have a Susanna um, piece and then I've expanded out on it and then it matches complements the last prompt which was stump work so really happy with it I'm not sure if I should stitch down each of those little petals or leave them I just don't know I think the fact that they're in the book they'll find their position and settle down here comes budget why is it when I turn on the camera the cat comes over must be because he hears me talking and he thinks oh who's she chatting to but um, yeah love it I ended up doing the cast um, overcast stitch on the little bird cage I did a little bit of frame stitching there and framed that out like I did there and there it was really just about drifting a subtleness of this piece, which is very, you know, intense. Fudgy, don't you come walking over. Um, and giving it a hint of it here. So excellent. So I still have two opportunities left for future stitcheries. So I'll have a little think about it. I'm sure something will pop up. It might be something Susanna and I do together in the future and I've got a, a bit of a spot for it. So a lot of memories in this little journal. Just love it. Love how everything's come together in it. 
it's quite a nice little mix. One thing I did think of doing too is the pages that we've just done, I think I'd like a tab here because when I closed it, I've got an opportunity to have something peeking out at the back here like this does. So I need to keep that in mind when I do another piece for it that um, pop a little tab, something to turn that page over. Yeah, I wonder if I've got a bit of fabric I could grab now just to pin it there to remind me because I'll forget. Hang on one second. Just grabbing the basket of goodies. Might use that. So I could either tuck it, I might tuck it in so that it's not part of the piece. It's just coming out from the piece. Yeah, I like that. Where's my pins? Hi, Fudgy. There we go. Yeah. I'll just leave that there. And when I do this, it may even... Yeah, look at the colours there. Like even the tab across complements that. So maybe I'll do something that is in grey tones on here. don't know. It's got a bit of a bird feel about it. And it's got a bit of an antique sewing feel it's yeah it's i love it it's very eclectic little bunny i'll come up with something oh the cut work english paper piecing more little birds sewing again and then of course my birds on the cover so the spine is really holding its own now it's it's all chunky and full and there's still i was worried that i'd be full but I can still see an angle. Let me lift that up again. I can still see that that's on an angle. So I think two more will just lift it and it'll be perfect. Yeah, really good. Okay, guys, that's the bird cage that I've just added to that piece. Look, it's there. Look at that. It's great when you stay within a, a selection of fabrics, like the Tim Holtz fabrics were drifting through the whole, whole journal. The colour palette, yeah. I really like putting together uh, similar fabrics ready for a, a journal and then just drift in around those colours. It really helps bring a journal together when you're doing something in this fashion, like slow stitch. All right, enough of me yabbering. I'll take some photos of that and that'll be the thumbnail. And um, we're done. I just got two more pages. I have to have a think about what we do. There's been a few good suggestions in the comments. If you can um, throw a comment down there of a, a challenge. Yeah, love it. Okay, all right guys. I'll leave you alone. Enjoy your evening. It's evening for me. It's about nine o'clock at night, hence this shadow. It's better during the daylight for me for filming, but I just had to come in and finish it off. Put a big tick under stump work. Thanks, guys. Look after yourselves. Bye.